Secretary birds are in an order of their own. It's very unique bird of prey, possibly not even related to birds of prey. And it's a terrestrial long-legged lanky bird that hunts in the open savannas and grasslands and nests in really quite small trees. The secretary bird is a unique raptor in an order of its own. It's long-legged, has a short hind talon, but not in the same way as a busted. It, it is actually quite a strong hind talon, quite capable of gripping snakes and lizards and, and hares. It's actually quite predacious and quite capable of flying very well. It also soar extremely high. It has long feathers that stick out the back of its head and apparently this is the, the root of its name is that it looked like the secretaries of old who used to use quills and put them behind their ears. There's another root that's supposed to be called secateur meaning that it's the hawk of the ground. Ter is in French for meaning the ground. Nobody's really too sure exactly where the root of the term secretary bird comes from. It's an elegant bird, walking all day, chasing down insects, game birds, hares, even young Thompson's gazelles it's been recorded killing. It definitely is a bird of prey in, in every way. It often will swallow large animals such as rodents and hares and then fly back to the nest and regurgitate them to its chicks. And in many ways is extremely vulnerable to humans. It can really only exist now in protected areas and remote areas. Its nesting choice is rather quite too close and is easily disturbed by people. It has now been identified as a, a bird in critical need of conservation actions. A secretary bird has an eagle-like lifestyle. It does have defended territories. They're quite widely spaced. We know of them being up to about two kilometers apart, but sometimes as much as 10, 15 kilometers apart in dry areas. They come to the nest and nest like an eagle. In many ways, they behave exactly like eagles. They produce one to two chicks very rarely three. When the chicks leave the nest they look really quite like an adult. There are only a few subtle differences and they often walk off and join large groups. It used to not be that uncommon to see groups as many as half a dozen secretary birds walking around on the plains of the East African plains such as Athi and certainly in the dry areas of northeastern Kenya. You could get to see as many as 10 to 12 individuals all walking together. It's also something that does occur in the Kalahari where you can get as many I believe leave as 30 all foraging together. They are definitely very weird birds and not really closely related to eagles but they do behave very much like them. As a conservation concern they are extremely vulnerable to humans because of their nesting in short trees. Also fire which is very prevalent in Africa. We burn the size of the Australian continent every year in Africa. That's taking out an enormous amount of trees as well as foraging areas for secretary birds. Nobody knows too much about their movements. It's definitely a species that needs to be studied. It could be that there is a big movement east and west across sub-Sahal Africa, copying that of other birds such as the grasshopper buzzard or swallow-tailed kite. It is a bit of enigma and definitely in need of more study and more conservation effort. The secretary bird is famous for killing snakes. It's the expectation of every documentary to see them stamping snakes to death. In reality, they do so quite rarely. One, there's not many snakes today to kill. That really is a very important point. There's virtually nothing in the way of snakes to kill. They do like to take rodents and lizards, but they're quite capable of flying down Franklin. Many years ago, I used to have a plane that was made out of a parachute and an engine and it flew at exactly the same speed as the secretary birds that were flying beneath me flying slowly and they will run after them as they zigzag through the grass or they will fly after them. They're quite capable of flying down yellow neck spurfowl as well as guinea fowl and Shelley's Franklin. So we see them literally chasing after the, the birds as they fly they will just fly behind them sometimes quite fast and then land on the ground and then carry on to chase them until they exhaust their prey and catch them and then beat them to death in effect. They're very effective as hunters. They're often taking insects and one often sees them stamping and listening quite hard and then sort of experimenting by thumping their foot up and down. A bit like uh, an open bill stalk or a yellow bill stalk sitting in the water. They will vibrate their foot until something jumps out and runs away.
boy for the second. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think there's something really bad with its foot. Obviously they took the um, they took the string off. Yeah, they, they just, that was it. No, there, there it is. is. Yeah, that's been put on deliberately. Yeah, look, it's gone round mm -hmm. and round and round. You, you're filming that? Yeah. Somebody has wrapped and wrapped and wrapped it round and round and round and round. Brilliant. Bird had his foot tied by somebody with what looks like very strong cord that you use for sewing up shoes. And as a result, the bird had to walk around with its foot sort of clubbed over. And it's the bones have been exposed, and the bones are going to come out the top of the toe. But funny thing is, is I think the toe is still alive. Certainly the other two are still alive. And if we can get the infection to go away, then there's a good chance that it might be able to recover the use of its foot good enough for release. You can go around on two, two, two feet, not a problem. See what I'm saying? You can go around with two toes on one foot. So far, you see the bones could be missing inside the foot, and that's okay. It's hot, which means it's still alive, which is good. I'm going to give it also an injection of antibiotics. Uh, no, I'll give it oral antibiotics. So this is what you do your you know your shoes with it's a shoelace eh? Huh? what do you know when you sew your shoes oh okay and somebody must have taken a long while to say that the rest of the leg is not necrotic and this part doesn't actually you see the bones coming through here so it's been standing on the top of its foot my thought is this is probably going to be captive for life because he's had this tied up over here I think the tendons have not been able to open so he's been walking about on the club foot and he's been walking around on the top of his foot and because of that he's eroded all the flesh away and the bones are coming out through the top of the foot um, there's really no need to do surgery at this point just gonna try to make sure that the infection goes away and try to return the use of the other two toes if he loses that middle toe that really might not be a big problem these guys are not, um, as people always think, snake eaters. They eat a lot. About 90% of what they eat are, are um, insects, grasshoppers, and rodents. Um, I've covered him in pyrethrum dust because he's absolutely covered in lice. And that means he's really quite chronically ill very depressed and when they are they get covered in lice so he's got pyrethrum powder there uh, which is about as safe as you're going to be able to get still not super safe so you have to make sure that doesn't get into its food so we're giving him these boots my hope is is that he'll be able to open this foot in time 
Uh, right now is day one. I don't suppose this thing is going to be anywhere near release for another six months or so, which is a real shame because it's an adult. And right now they probably got chicks. Everybody, all the others have got chicks. Ooh, clever bird. These things are so um, easy in captivity. They follow you around. Even after the first week or two in captivity, they very intelligent. Good. 